Section 4 of the Dhammapada, Chapters 15 through 18. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. The Dhammapada, translated by F. Max Mueller. Section 4. Chapter 15. Happiness. Let us live happily, then, not hating those who hate us. Among men who hate us, let us dwell free from hatred. Let us live happily, then, free from ailments among the ailing. Among men who are ailing, let us dwell free from ailments. Let us live happily, then, free from greed among the greedy. Among men who are greedy, let us dwell free from greed. Let us live happily, then, though we call nothing our own. We shall be like the bright gods, feeding on happiness. Victory breeds hatred, for the conquered is unhappy. He who has given up both victory and defeat, he, the contented, is happy. There is no fire like passion. There is no losing throw like hatred. There is no pain like this body. There is no happiness higher than rest. Hunger is the worst of diseases, the body the greatest of pains. If one knows this truly, that is nirvana, the highest happiness. Health is the greatest of gifts, contentedness the best riches. Trust is the best of relationships, nirvana the highest happiness. He who has tasted the sweetness of solitude and tranquility is free from fear and free from sin, while he tastes the sweetness of drinking in the law. The sight of the elect, Arya, is good. To live with them is always happiness. If a man does not see fools, he will be truly happy. He who walks in the company of fools suffers a long way. Company with fools, as with an enemy, is always painful. Company with the wise is pleasure, like meeting with kinsfolk. Therefore, one ought to follow the wise, the intelligent, the learned, the much enduring, the dutiful, the elect. One ought to follow a good and wise man, as the moon follows the path of the stars. Chapter 16 Pleasure He who gives himself to vanity, and does not give himself to meditation, forgetting the real aim of life and grasping at pleasure, will in time envy him who has exerted himself in meditation. Let no man ever look for what is pleasant, or what is unpleasant. Not to see what is pleasant is pain and it is pain to see what is unpleasant. Let, therefore, no man love anything. Loss of the beloved is evil. Those who love nothing and hate nothing have no fetters. From pleasure comes grief. From pleasure comes fear. He who is free from pleasure knows neither grief nor fear. From affection comes grief. From affection comes fear. He who is free from affection knows neither grief nor fear. From lust comes grief. From lust comes fear. He who is free from lust knows neither grief nor fear. From love comes grief. From love comes fear. He who is free from love knows neither grief nor fear. From greed comes grief. From greed comes fear. He who is free from greed knows neither grief nor fear. He who possesses virtue and intelligence, who is just, speaks the truth, and does what is his own business, him the world will hold dear. He in whom a desire for the ineffable nirvana has sprung up, who is satisfied in his mind, and whose thoughts are not bewildered by love, he is called Urvam 
srotas, carried upwards by the stream. Kinsmen, friends, and lovers salute a man who has been long away, and returns safe from afar. In like manner, his good works receive him who has done good, and has gone from this world to the other, as kinsmen receive a friend on his return. Chapter 17 Anger Let a man leave anger, let him forsake pride, let him overcome all bondage. No sufferings befall the man who is not attached to name and form, and who calls nothing his own. He who holds back rising anger like a rolling chariot, him I call a real driver. Other people are but holding the reins. Let a man overcome anger by love. Let him overcome evil by good. Let him overcome the greedy by liberality. The liar by truth. Speak the truth. Do not yield to anger. Give, if thou art asked for little. By these three steps thou wilt go near to the gods. The sages who injure nobody, who always control their body, they will go to the unchangeable place, nirvana, where, if they have gone, they will suffer no more. Those who are ever watchful, who study day and night, and who strive after nirvana, their passions will come to an end. This is an old saying. O Atula, this is not only of today. They blame him who sits silent. They blame him who speaks much. They also blame him who says little. There is no one on earth who is not blamed. There never was, there never will be, nor is there now, a man who is always blamed, or a man who is always praised. But he whom those who discriminate praise continually day after day, as without blemish, wise, rich in knowledge and virtue, who would dare to blame him, like a coin made of gold from the Gambu River? Even the gods praise him. He is praised even by Brahman. Beware of bodily anger, and control thy body. Leave the sins of the body, and with thy body practice virtue. Beware of the anger of the tongue, and control thy tongue. Leave the sins of the tongue, and practice virtue with thy tongue. Beware of the anger of the mind, and control thy mind. Leave the sins of the mind, and practice virtue with thy mind. The wise who control their body, who control their tongue, the wise who control their mind, are indeed well controlled. Chapter 18 Impurity Thou art now like a seer leaf. The messengers of death, Yama, have come near to thee. Thou standest at the door of thy departure, and thou hast no provision for thy journey. Make thyself an island, work hard, be wise. When thy impurities are blown away, and thou art free from guilt, thou wilt enter into the heavenly world of the elect, Arya. Thy life has come to an end. Thou art come near to death, Yama. There is no resting place for thee on the road, and thou hast no provision for thy journey. Make thyself an island, work hard, be wise. When thy impurities are blown away, and thou art free from guilt, thou wilt not enter again into birth and decay. Let a wise man blow off the impurities of his self, as a smith blows off the impurities of silver, one by one, little by little, and from time to time. As the impurity which springs from the iron when it springs from it, destroys it, thus do a transgressor's own works lead him to the evil path. The taint of prayers is non-repetition. The taint of houses 
non-repair. The taint of the body is sloth, the taint of a watchman, thoughtlessness. Bad conduct is the taint of woman, greediness the taint of a benefactor. Tainted are all evil ways in this world and in the next. But there is a taint worse than all taints. Ignorance is the greatest taint. O mendicants, throw off that taint and become taintless. Life is easy to live for a man who is without shame, a crow hero, a mischief maker, an insulting, bold, and wretched fellow. But life is hard to live for a modest man, who always looks for what is pure, who is disinterested, quiet, spotless, and intelligent. He who destroys life, who speaks untruth, who in this world takes what is not given him, who goes to another man's wife, and the man who gives himself to drinking intoxicating liquors, he, even in this world, digs up his own root. O oh man, know this, that the unrestrained are in a bad state. Take care that greediness and vice do not bring thee to grief for a long time. The world gives according to their faith or according to their pleasure. If a man frets about the food and the drink given to others, he will find no rest either by day or by night. He in whom that feeling is destroyed and taken out with the very root finds rest by day and by night. There is no fire like passion. There is no shark like hatred. There is no snare like folly. There is no torrent like greed. The fault of others is easily perceived, but that of oneself is difficult to perceive. A man winnows his neighbor's faults like chaff, but his own fault he hides, as a cheat hides the bad die from the gambler. If a man looks after the faults of others, and is always inclined to be offended, his own passions will grow, and he is far from the destruction of passions. There is no path through the air. A man is not a samana by outward acts. The world delights in vanity. The Tathagatas, the Buddhas, are free from vanity. There is no path through the air. A man is not a samana by outward acts. No creatures are eternal, but the awakened Buddha are never shaken. End section four of the Dhammapada. This recording is in the public domain.